This lesson is going to be management of their Google Sheet file, how you can rename it, move it, download it, download options, also how it relates to working with XLS, how you can download and open up Excel files and also upload them back into Google Docs and then use your Google Sheet, use your Google Sheets in order to open and update in Excel file just as you could, would with a Google Sheet. So all of that and a whole lot more is coming up in this lesson. In order to access Google Sheets that you've created, you can go to your Google Drive and going by you can search by the name or if you know the location of where the file is located on your drive, you can open it from there as well. For the Google Sheet itself, once you have it open, you can find out where it's located by going down to the details of the file and it'll tell you the location of where the file is located. So the main folder that it's sitting in. So in this case, it's going to be sitting within test 10 and that's going to be the file location of where the current file is located. Once you have the Google Sheet open, you can also select at the top move and that will give you an option to move the file from the current location to another location on your Google Drive. So right now it's sitting within the test 10 folder. If I wanted to move it back to the root folder, I can simply select to go back to the drive. And then once I want to, once I locate the folder that I want to save it into, I can select the move here. I can also create a brand new folder in the left hand side under the new folder icon. So let's move the folder and the file over to the main root of the drive. When I am on the drive, I have an option to add a star and then that way those can be a way that I can search for files and specify that I can, I want to look at all the files that I do have currently starred and that will provide me a directory of files that I only have starred that I can see. In addition, you can select the file and you can add a star to it. So add to starred. So that way it will add a star and allow us to locate it whenever we're searching under the starred. There's also an option when we've got the file open that we can select and add a star to it and that will as well place it with under the starred directory so that we can easier locate the files and the most important files that we're actively working on. There's also sorting where we can select recent files and that will list out all of the recent files that we've been working on, providing us another way to easily access the files. So once we've located the file that we want to open up on our drive, we can select to open the file and that will open the file to the latest version that we've just been working on. And once we've got the file open, we have several options to manage the actual file itself. So under the file tab, we have an option to create a brand new spreadsheet. We can also create the spreadsheet from a template. We can open another file that's located on our drive. So from here, we can select to open a file either from our drive, and it gives us a brief preview of that file. We can select files that are shared with us. We can select files within the starred folder, and this is where it allows us to a lot easier locate those files. There's also recent, and then we also have an option to upload a file. So we can drag a file from our computer and add it and upload it. So first off, let's go ahead and we're going to download this existing file and download it as we've got several options here. So we can download it as a Microsoft Excel file. So that will give us the XLSX extension. There's open docs, PDF, a as a web page, comma separated file or tab separated file values. So we select whichever one we want to work with when we download it. So whichever format suits us best. So in this case, let's go ahead and we're going to download it as a Microsoft Excel file. So that will kick off and initiate the download. And we'll see that this gets automatically downloaded into our download directory on our local computer. So now this file is sitting with the same name that we used for the Google spreadsheet. This is going to be sitting on our computer. And from there, we can open it up directly in our computer. So we have an option to select open. And now because it's an Excel file, it's going to automatically try to default to open it up under if we do have Microsoft Excel installed. So this is the file opened as an XLSX file. 
using OpenOffice directly on my computer so we can make some updates to it and make some updates to some of the content, save it back, and now let's upload it back up to Google Sheets. And I'm gonna save it as an XLS file and then just hit save, keep the current format. And now going into Google Drive, you gotta take the two files. So this was the original one, the XLSX file. And then this is the new one that we just created. I'm gonna upload them both to my computer and then we're gonna open them up with Google Sheets. So now with Google Sheets, you don't actually need to convert them into a Sheets doc. You can work with the XLS format. So the typical Excel format. So what happens when we try to open it? We can just double click to open it. Notice the icon is gonna be different than the Google Sheets where the Google Sheets has the Google Sheets icon and the XLSX files and the XLS files are gonna have an X. As you open it up, it's gonna give you a tour, a quick tour for the first time to give you information about how to edit XLS files directly on Google Sheets. So you don't have to convert it. And notice that this is the extension that this is a Microsoft Excel format file. So we can make up Dates to the file content and have it saved as the XLS file, as the Excel file. Let's open up the XLS file and it does take a few moments. Now on the drive, we actually have all three versions and the name is actually gonna be the same except for the XLS files. Those are gonna have that XLS extension, so indicating that they are Excel files and that you could be editing them as such. So the name is slightly different, but the main name of the files is gonna be the same. So we've got all three versions. So we've got the original one that we had. So this was just the test new in Google Sheets. We've got the XLSX file. So it's the newer version of Excel. We can upload that and we're making some updates. So this was exactly a direct copy of what we had within our Google Sheets. And then we have our XLS file. And this is the one that we actually edited and updated locally on our computer where we added those three items within the cells, and then we uploaded this version. So when you are working with XLS, it's always good practice to have the main file that you are working with to avoid any type of confusion. So if you do choose to work with the XLS files, then ensure that you are marking those as the main file that you want to work with. And once you have it within Google Sheets, this is gonna give you the exact same options as you would have with Sheets, except it just saves it as an XLS file. So that's the only real difference between them is that the extension is gonna remain the same and you can also open it and edit it as such and do all of the collaboration that you have typically with Google Sheets. So there are some other options when you are downloading. So there's the open document format, there's a PDF. So the PDF, uh, you won't be able to edit that within Excel. Uh, there's also web pages, there's a comma separated. So that's good if you're dumping values and there's tab separated values. If you do want to rename the files that you're working with, you can also do that under file, or you can just double click the name and type in the new name that you wanna use. So there are some options where you can rename it and it's gonna default opening up within the input area of your sheet where we've got the name. You can also move the file. So just as we moved with the shortcut up at the top, we can also select to move the file and then it will just ask us where we wanna move the file into. So it opens up a pop-up with our drive and then we can navigate here, we can create new folders, just as we did up here at the top with the quick menu options. We can remove the file, so we can move it into trash. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna temporarily delete the file from the active folder. And if it stays within trash for more than 30 days, then that file will actually be permanently deleted. So if you do wanna take it out of trash, you can do that as well. So let's go to the home screen and go back into our drive and we're going to notice that those files are actually gone that file is actually gone it has been moved into trash so let's restore it from trash so files that are in trash are there for 30 days and then they automatically get removed permanently if you open up trash you're going to see 
the files that are trashed, you can always empty the trash, so that will permanently delete the files. If you want to restore a file, then you can select the file that you want to restore, and you have an option to either restore or delete forever. If you restore it, it's going to automatically go back to where it was located. So this one automatically went back to where it was sitting before. I'm going to go ahead and close the XLS and the Excel files and remove those. And when you hit remove, it's going to move them into trash. And again, the same 30 days applies that you can either remove them or uh, restore them if you need to. So let's open up the file that we were originally working with. Uh, so this was our testing file. And under the file menu, we can also make a copy of the file. So this is automatically going to try to take the name. It's going to make copy of. So this is important because this is uh, a good way to avoid confusion on which is the actual file that you want to be using. Uh, so it is a good idea if it is a copy, if for whatever reason you want to make a copy, then just note that within the name to avoid confusion with the name of the active, the one that you want to work on. Uh, you can also select to share it with the same people, copy the comments, and so on. And then also gives you the location where it's creating the copy of the file. So now I've created the copy of the file. And there are some other options where we can import. Uh, so importing, what that will do is that allows us to import files from our drive. There's also shared, recent, and upload. So if we want to upload and import an uploaded file from our computer, let's upload one of those XLS files that we just created earlier in this lesson. And I'm going to select the XLS version and open. So what it's doing is it's uploading it. So once we're uploading it, we have a choice where we can create a new spreadsheet. Uh, so that will update things. We can insert new sheets. We can replace the existing spreadsheet. And then there's a few other options there. Or we can just select to import the data that's contained because this is an XLS file. So it's a spreadsheet file. So we can import the data. So we're going to insert new sheets and we're going to import the data from that sheet. And now we see that we've got a new sheet that's been created and using this name of sheet one, and they've bracketed around one so that we have a way to distinguish what our original content was as opposed to what our new content is that we've just imported from the sheet. An add shortcut to drive. So you can do this as well when you click the file within drive and you can select to add a shortcut and shortcuts linked to the original allowing it to appear in more than one location so you can do the shortcut here and it'll create a shortcut and ask you where you're creating the shortcut so which part of the drive you are creating the shortcut uh, so there's the shortcut that it has created to the test file and it's going to use the same name and this is just a shortcut. So with the shortcuts, it's going to have this arrow pointing up icon. And also, this is going to be the same thing that if you create the shortcut from directly within the file, and it'll ask you where you're creating the shortcut in, and let's create another shortcut. So that will give us two shortcuts to the same file. They're both going to look the same. And we can take these and we can move them around. So that way, we can have shortcuts sitting in other areas of our of our drive and then we can access those. You can also have different shortcut options where you can rename it, you can add it to start, you can see the details, you can make a copy, you can remove it, you can also move the shortcut. So the shortcuts, once they are created, are going to operate just as you would with any other files. If you select settings, this is the settings for the spreadsheet. So it'll give you the locale and it'll affect formatting details such as functions, dates, and currency. In addition, the time zone, this is going to affect all time-related functions. Um, so generally, you're not going to see much difference, but if you are working with dates and currencies, then make sure that you are uh, setting the proper settings for the spreadsheet in order to accommodate those. There's also calculation, so how the calculation works. So this is effects on how today, RAND, random between are updated. So whenever on change, we can update it every hour and every minute as well. So on change, there's iterative calculation determines whether formulas with circular references are resolved by iteration calculation. There's more information about this. So generally, you can just leave that off. 
but if you do need this option then this is where you can find it in the settings so once you've adjusted your settings you can hit save settings and that's going to save the settings for this spreadsheet with the new updated settings and this is all available within file we've already covered to share you can share it directly uh, as an email file and you can email all of the collaborators as well you can publish it to the web so there's a lot of options under file this is mainly dealing with management of the document all the different options that you have for that management and here's some quick tips to customize the way that google drive handles your google sheets uh, so if you go into the drive and up at the top right hand corner under the settings cog you can select that and select settings and within the main settings under the general tab you've got an option here to replace with shortcuts uh, so don't replace with shortcuts so options for replacing items with shortcuts uh, there's also convert uploads so if you want your convert files to google docs editor format you can select that or unselect that there's also the offline option for google docs sheets slides on the device and then there's suggestions so suggested files and shared with me um, there's also the density so the view so this is the view that we're looking at within the drive so you've got some options to update uh, how it manages the uploaded files as well best practices in general is that if you are uploading multiple files and to avoid any confusion keep the active one within the google drive and then you can download the inactive or the different versions onto your computer if you need to uh, so best practice is also to rename it uh, or to move it uh, so if you are making separate items then you could rename it as such so if this is your main then just go ahead and add the words main or bracketed main to that so it's up to you how you want to manage that but in this way you can easily tell which one is the main file that you're working on so i just usually just do like a main or an active in order to indicate that this is the active one in the name of the file uh, so if it's not needed in Google to avoid uh, over having too many different files uh, so this is just a copy so to go ahead and remove it so to keep your drive fairly clean and only with the active ones that you are interacting with also to avoid confusion on the files because the shortcuts are going to share the same file names uh, unless you absolutely need shortcuts it's suggested that you don't use the shortcuts and if you do have shortcuts uh, keep them and you can also rename them as such and again it's all about trying to avoid any confusion with the main active file this is the one that you're wanting to be working on especially when you're collaborating so this helps others understand better which is the file that you want to have as the current version of the file the main version of the file so those are just some quick tips for best practices when working with Google Drive. Also, when you are uploading the file, and if it's an XLS file, uh, if you do need it within the XLS, then you can keep it as XLS. Otherwise, you can convert it into a Google format by making a copy of it. So this XLS file, if I want to make a copy of it this is going to automatically try to convert it into google sheets or we can save it as google sheets and again it will make a separate copy of it as a google sheets copy of the file and the original xls file will always remain but it will also have a, a brand new copy of the version of the google sheets so this one was the one that was just created and again now we've got two with the same name and actually we've got three with the same name because also including the XLS. Agreed upon which way is the best method to handle multiple files so that everyone knows which is the active file to work on.